I want to talk to you about my mentor and good friend Don Rutledge who died a few years ago but he pretty much shaped most of my photography and how I approach things. Uh, Don had majored in psychology and I majored in social work and we met when I was in college. Um, I'd seen him many years before he worked with my uncle who worked for him and learned from him as well. So I want to just talk about a few of the photos that I used in my master's thesis, which there's a link here for you on, uh, for you to go to if you want to read that. And uh, Don was a unique individual in the way he treated photography. He understood body language and what it would communicate. So here, what a good example of body language is um, the missionary up in Alaska is looking over Don's shoulder up and into like what's he looking at you're asking all these things but also it gives you the fact that he looks like a visionary and Don learned how to capture those little tiny slices of a moment to help communicate that this is uh, somebody important he's shooting up at him versus at eye level so he's putting a lot more importance in him as he's looking into the future and at the same time you get this dress in code of seeing how he looks like a Eskimo and he has the frost even on his mustache, which this was a cool picture to see for sure. It changed how many people saw missionaries. They weren't just in churches. They were out getting frostbite almost. Another thing that Don did was he kind of took missions out of a church building and showed missionaries doing things like tubing down a mountain. And he had worked for the Missions USA magazine uh, from the 60s up until the 80s. And then from the 80s on until he retired in the late 90s, Don worked for these magazines. And before that, I'll show you some pictures also that he did in other contexts. But all during this time, Don was being published every single month, eight pages to 30 pages, covering 50 states and 150 countries. He's probably the most published um, straight through photographer working for uh, agencies that I've ever known of. I mean, National Geographic photographers shoot maybe for a month or two or so for a story, and maybe even longer, but then that comes up once this year, and then maybe they'll have a story in a, another couple of years, and if they're lucky, one other story in the same year. Don's being published every year, every single month. So this is kind of how Don was uh, capturing moments, making people look like they're having fun, and kind of putting missions on in so you don't think of it as traditional. Now, this looks like a lot of fun. The other thing he did was he understand universal language of things like smiles, like the boy, catching a ball. I mean, boys like this are doing this all over the world. But the difference here is this is an Eskimo boy up in Alaska, and Don is helping introduce people from the Bible Belt to Alaska about, and the best way to kind of make these connections, Don knows, is to make it where this looks like any kid around the world playing ball in his front yard and so he immediately connects with that and then you see his home in the background and you want to know more but Don understood body language and understood the importance of capturing it and making these moments where you dignify the person and really show um, a care and concern so that they connect to the audience now now Back in 1956, Don found this little story that there were more black millionaires, is how it was written up in the New York Times, a little tiny, like a paragraph at the most, living on Auburn Street in Atlanta, Georgia, than anywhere else in the world. And Don thought, that's a story I got to do. So he pitched the idea. Sepia Magazine sent the writer. His name was John Howard Griffin, and they did the story. And then John Howard Griffin told Don about his project he's working on. And while the um, number of black millionaires living on one street was kind of really shocking, uh, John Howard Griffin was going to take drugs that then, as he sat under a lamp, would make him turn black. And with a little extra makeup, then he could become really looking like a, a black man in the South. And then he wrote about this in the very famous book, Black Like Me, which was so revolutionary in 1956 when it came out. This is long before you really start hearing about Martin Luther King. But this changed um, how civil rights was done because everybody was talking about these black people were different people. And basically, John Howard Griffin, with Don's help, 
showed, no, uh, it's just their skin color, and um, that's how we're treating them, based on their skin color alone. So here he is filling in the makeup, but Don was kind of showing what he did behind, and in other words, authenticating that he really did do this. So they took him in different places, um, and just wanted to be sure you saw the complete transformation, and Don's the only person, not even John Howard Griffin's family, ever saw him as a black man and also as a white man. Don's the only person who ever did. He found that out later after John Howard Griffin had died. And that was due to the complications of taking these drugs, I think. Here he is across the lunch counter, again, trying to show how he would go around and be in the South, trying to see, um, understand how other blacks are living, and then see how they were treated by the black community. And then he turn around and uh, learn how to how the people worked as shoe shine uh, guys, and then he'd end up even showing. Um, Don showed him actually polishing some of the white men's shoes and interacting with people as well. But this gives you kind of a nice little slice of how Don um, showed little things around the edges of the picture, the crutches. That's the um, shoe shine boy who really is just really having a hard time making it. Their lunch is off to the side. And they're just uh, having a moment there, relaxing as eating. So it just kind of showed there in New Orleans, walking down the street and looking at movies. So this was established that um, John Howard Griffin did not just put the makeup on and do this in a hotel room, but actually went out and uh, people and seeing how they treated him. Now, this other story um, that Don did um, in the 60s where he went and he was trying to show education and the missionaries, kind of the school systems and how this lady is teaching them to count. And you can see this, but the main reason I wanted to include this in my thesis was this moment just, it tells the story, a good slice of the story about counting and the interaction and the enthusiasm. The thing that Don really helped me understand was photography helped capture emotions. To write this in text form really would take a thousand words. To really talk about each of the kids, their expressions and enthusiasm for learning from the teacher. Now, when he was back up on the tundra, this is actually my favorite photograph ever of um, Don's. Um, you have to look really close, um, but in the doorway, um, there are actually four kids in the doorway. The one with one foot out the door, behind her with one girl with her hand in her mouth, and then behind her up in the corner is a little face, and then there's another face peeking around the corner. Then you have another family member looking through the window over to the left, and then you can see the, the rest of the family, they're all looking out to a missionary who just drove up. I think it's Sheely, the same missionary that we saw in the very first picture. And as he's, um, that was wrapped in the um, Eskimo gear and had uh, frost on his mustache. But as he's walking up, this family he's built a relationship with, they're excited to see him. And you don't even pay attention to that. They don't. You don't even see the photographer in this. You, he's. They're looking right around him and looking at the missionary. They're excited. Now, the thing that Don talked about on this photograph that he was proud about was he captured all the emotions, but he also showed the conditions they lived in, the poverty of the house, where you can actually probably see through the boards um, between the boards into the house. You can see that they have very little, very, um, the trash can out front, the mop out front, the siding is coming off the house. I mean, there's no siding there. At one point there were, and there's like shingles or something there. And at the same time, off to the right, you can see some of the tundra. Now, Don talked about leaving that little sliver and stuff on the side to create depth. There you can see that S-curve kind of pulling you back out and that there's more to where they live. And this is just a powerful photograph that I wanted to share with you. Now, Don in 1966 is down, I think this is St. Louis, I can't remember where, but he was showing about the poverty and the places kids growing up, and here they are playing with a rat, a dead rat, in the middle of a street. So this kind of gives you an idea of the, um, the, the conditions these kids are growing up into, 
And so it's pretty easy to see, and here he was doing it for missionaries and getting people to get involved and want to come and help these kids. And uh, this would kind of compel you to feel like they need some help and something else to play with other than dead rat. So um, I think Don got that message across. Now watch how carefully he's uh, framed that. So he's got all the way down to the feet. He has other boy in the background creating depth, the lines that kind of draw you into the boy behind him. But you can tell there's a relationship there between the boys, too. This is down in Florida, the Indians down there. And Don just uh, had a way of capturing the, uh, the hut, the lady selling her wares by the road, the fact they're made out of the same reeds and stuff that the, the, the hut she's in is there. But she's just sitting there waiting for tourists to come by and buy some of her goods. But Don kind of showed not just that she does this, but often people in this situation, you can see the despair on her face and the fact that she's just kind of waiting. There's not much she can do. So he's compelling you to feel compassion for some of these people. By picking a moment where she looks down, he's looking slightly down at her versus when we looked at the first missionary picture in the Eskimo, he's looking up at him to make him like a hero and that he's the one leading the vision of missions in um, Alaska. But here you get this feeling he's looking slightly down. And when you look slightly down at a person, Don taught me, that's the parent view. That's how a parent looks down at a child, but you're creating attention to the audience because now the audience becomes the parent or the person responsible for this person in the photograph. So that's his connection here, understanding just slightly shooting down, creating that um, compassion for this person. Now, this is probably Don's favorite story he ever worked on, and this was where he went and lived for about a month with Bailey King in Quinton, Mississippi. And when he went there, he um, lived with them in the house. So that's where Don slept in their house back there, as you see. And he gave just enough money to not change the status of them while he was there. So if he could get into their household and they could, uh, he could eat an extra sandwich with them, he paid enough not to change her status while he was doing the story. And later when he left, they would end up getting him a home and changing this whole family. But uh, while he was there, he was very careful not to do anything to change the situation. But he couldn't go stay in a hotel and show them from morning to evening and bedtime and all that. So that's why he did that. Now notice how he's got all those three horses and they're all composed. You kind of... Uh, there's just a little space around it. And Bailey King is looking out like he doesn't have a lot of space in front of him. That's where you normally would crop, you'd think, and make it a horizontal and show all the space out in front of him where he's looking. Well, that shows hope. Don taught me that having somebody look out the edge of the frame like that, that looks like all of his best years are behind him. Very symbolic, but little subtle things that Don you taught me how to do. Here, again, he's looking slightly down at Bailey King, but he's giving him dignity. But the reason he did that was this boyish, some of the comments he would make are just innocence of um, treating people with honor and dignity as he did. He just saw people as people. Uh, the only difference between him and a black guy was uh, just the color of the skin, he'd say. You know, we're the same. Uh, he said, it's not so bad being poor, it's just inconvenient. There were some great quotes Don got while working on this story. And here he's working out plowing his field. And one of the interesting things that he talks about is, you know, Bailey bought, spent $300 and bought this land and worked really hard. His neighbor that he grew up with uh, went out, one of his friends, and he went and spent th uh, money on a guitar. And um, so you'd think Bailey King did the right thing and was the more responsible person. Turned around, his friend was Johnny Cash. <laughs> but the whole point of that is not to put down, it was just showing that he was doing, he was trying to be responsible, do the right thing. He worked hard plowing that garden with his uh, horse there. Now he had, his neighbors were other farmers that uh but they were african-americans and they were good friends of his 
But notice how he's just talking at eye level to him, and he's listening. He's not talking to the the friends that his were black. He's listening. This was done. Don would often find these moments where he could have gotten one of Bailey talking to him, but they look like he's the boss man. But if you look at this, it's almost like the roles are reversed. He's listening and to his friends and respecting them. So Don had a way of capturing this dignity that the giving honor and dignity to other individuals that Bailey King was doing with his friends um, who happened to be black farmers. He showed his wife washing clothes, but looking out in concern for her husband, Bailey. And then his little dog under his foot, just being there. You can just picture this with just about anybody, but there's a relationship. Notice he, he didn't show everything. He just showed the worn out boots of Bailey on the front porch, kind of worn out. Here's Bailey with his dog again. You can just see he's showing just enough of the dog always there with him, his friend. And it showed, you know, dogs and people who come up, it, it, it really shows the compassion because someone who's good with animals and um, is usually a compassionate person. So Don got down on his level and shot him in this one of the contemplative moments for Bailey. Now, this photograph would have been difficult to take, but he had to wait where Bailey's sleeping. His wife is working in the kitchen preparing, and you can tell, you can see all the way down to the bones of Bailey, and it's almost like a death scene because of how morbid it almost looks. But you can see the compassion but that he took this with to give dignity to him, but also show the reality of the situation. And these are their kids all having fun swimming. And so you get the, you also can see they're not like fat. <laughs> they're not fat because they don't have much money. Uh, so they're just having fun as kids. Here they are looking, they collected some bugs, one of his sons. So here's Bailey and his wife joking around on their front porch. Just having fun. A relationship, a husband and a wife who are love and care for each other. Don just knew how to be there long enough to finally let the guard down and become real with each other. And you can just see this moment. And Don also understood series. If you'll notice in that series, the one foot, he didn't quite have her foot in, so he shifted the camera ever so slightly to be sure he had his wife and Bailey really well composed. And here he is uh, sitting in his chair while his daughter's combing his hair. Again, you can see just the bones right through his chest. Uh, I mean, there, there's not much there, just skin on a skeleton practically. But this man worked hard, plowing fields, doing everything he could. And I believe those are his children up on the wall, one that was in the army. He tried to get in the army, but he couldn't, Don said. But he shows how life goes on, and it's just a normal family. They don't see anything different. They're just taking care of their dad. It's a long night, sitting by the fire at the end of a long day. Moments. But he tries to capture, it's almost like the country doctor in Life magazine, the country doctors leaning against the um, kitchen drinking his cup of coffee at the end of a long day and I think Don has the same kind of sentiment that Eugene Smith did in that picture. Now this is another one where a uh, different story and you can see how Don waits for those little moments the Alaskan family with a kid looking out the window and here he has the same thing. It'd be one thing just to have the picture of the dad, but with the kids and the different personalities in the background, it's somewhat humorous, but you can tell um, he's a, his face expression may um, make you think a little bit differently, but when you see his kids, you can see he's probably a very caring dad too. 
love this photo of a day uh, a lady who's uh, teaching daycare with kids and this little girl is behind her uh, playing with plastic scissors like she's cutting her hair it's just a precious moment but notice the composition he's just got just enough of the girl comes down that she's not paying attention but she knows that the girl is she's entertaining her now this photo um, is three good friends of different ethnicity and this is in the 60s if you can mind or 70s I believe it was early 70s so these kids all relating to each other and having fun still when um, many people are living in separate neighborhoods and segregated this really shows um, love has no boundaries uh, and that was one thing Don was good at capturing now when he went into Guatemala here um, now this is a dirt floor if you pay attention you'll notice these are hammocks which are their bed so they're you're in their bedroom slash kitchen everything these are like one room uh, huts that people lived in you can see out the slats that there's not much here but there's so much poverty and the medical conditions are tough because even here the mother holding the daughter I think that's a daughter or son um, she's missing some teeth but her other daughter I think is there is excited that this is a missionary who cares for the family and you can tell the little kid there is not really sure but the mother and daughter are encouraging saying this is our friend and trying to get the little one to be responsive it's like introducing your kids to your friends that haven't met them yet you can just see this the world over this is in Ethiopia during when uh, in the 80s when there was a lot of malnutrition and people were starving to death and Don just wanted to show the eyes of the future of was in the children of some of these people who are dying and uh, that's the hands of the parent and you can see there's just real down to their bones practically here in Ethiopia in a feeding station you can see the guy to the left there who is holding a little kid another um, an, uh, Air, what do you call it? a nurse or a care worker who's come over from the United States helping with a kid and holding them but you can see that the future is in the children who are a little bit healthier and the, ki the parents and all they just they're down to their bones here and this is how the adults were looking flies were in their eyes and just the scratches on the skin there's not much there if it took the blanket off all you'd see is probably a skeleton body and Don's trying to give dignity but also show the situation of how dire straits it is the malnutrition so bad here that they had to get nutrition into the uh, the baby's stomach through a feeding and so they're working to save this little kid and the mother is so appreciative and the nurse missionary here is doing everything to show that they're caring for her kid but also care for her and nothing makes a parent more happy than have someone taking care of their children with them and the joy that comes uh, in those moments of well these are things that Don did so well he talked about the eyes being the windows to the soul now here in the feeding station you can see the parents all helping their kids they're sharing a bowl and the reason you can tell they're sharing is the the person in the middle they're eating and then the kids eating so there they are sharing what they have which is very little here again men who've come in and outside the feeding station but look at conditions they're walking on these rocks just horrible hard conditions this is a missionary in a, I think it's either um, in a restaurant, I think, in Eastern Europe. But notice the relaxed part where the missionary, it's not a portrait per se, and it's a moment where you can see the missionary's expression shows a contemplative but yet concerned look. The rest, the lady in the back behind there, um, just gives context in some of this that's going on around here. I'm not really sure, but um, it is a 
Makes me think this is a nurse uh, in the background. Now, I kept on talking about when you can see through the um, walls of houses. Well, here in, I think it's Thailand, I believe, or somewhere in Asia, there the houses are up on stilts and there's like water below. But here you can see through the floor of the house. And I believe that's water below them kicking the light off from the sun. And you can see the missionaries and, and everybody eating there. But you can see the relationship, the lady in the top right-hand corner smiling. And um, and it's just a nice little moment. But at the same time, it shows you the conditions and how just impoverished they really are. Now, interestingly, um, through the years... Um, and Don, growing up on a farm, he understood the importance of vaccinating, helping your um, animals take care of them. You know, when you deworm, say, for example, your animals, you actually help the community in the getting them dewormed as well. Because when you take care of your animals, it helps all the way up the food chain, help everybody. So here you see a veterinarian helping um, in Africa. Now, you can see the hopelessness here and the mother holding her little baby, but the fly on the cheek um, and the teeth, just the desperate situation of, oh, please help me. Uh, Don was able to capture these with dignity, but at the same time showing the despair in people's faces so that the audience would want to do something for her. And a child so malnourished and just looking hopeless here, you know, just barely holding on. And while they were doing the story, Don told me about this one. He wasn't really sure if this was uh, a spy within the village or not. But he took the picture because of the, there's a distrust and um, the you feel the tension. And in some ways, that's part of the story that there are men like this that are, it just doesn't make you sit easily with this photo. And many of the people are escaping, being tortured, and that's what's happened in Europe lately, in Syria, other places, when people are being killed and run off their land uh, by other people. And you can kind of get the idea there's some people look like this that probably want to hurt you. After they've walked so far across the desert, their feet are needing healing. And here they're working on helping this lady's feet, which are really got sores all over them and problems from being in the desert. Just seeing all the flies going after the moisture in the kids' eyes is just so hard. Oh, it breaks your heart. And I think Don did a really good job of showing a mother. Again, you notice she doesn't have much room in front of her, how hopeless it feels. And the child, he Don wanted to capture it. It's a very difficult situation in Ethiopia. And showing the barren land like there's nothing there. Uh, there's just burned out. And then this is the same missionary before he showed that I had a picture of, but here she's laughing with the child, showing the relationships that they form. Now this was in Cairo, and here a missionary is walking down the street. They're kind of enjoying each other, but notice how even the people around them are noticing a relationship of people caring for one another they don't always see, so there's a curiosity. And Don had a way of not just showing this from left to right and giving you enough space, creating depth in the photo with a uh, lady in the far background and shallow depth of field to kind of force you back to the front. So you look around this photo and you go to the lady who's got her hand on her cheek looking at them, kind of what's going on here. And she doesn't have any shoes and stuff, so she may be a beggar. And then Don, at the same time, would take pictures of like missionary kids or people uh, in their sitting by a window, reading a book with her cats and kittens there. It's just a nice little moment. So I hope you kind of understand some a little about my friend uh, Don Rutledge, how much he cared for people, how he used his psychology, he used composition and other things. But probably more so than camera techniques and framing and all that stuff and lighting that often most of us get captured 
into the one thing that Don did that made a huge difference in his photography is take all that psychology he had learned and how to read people in symbolism and relationships and look for those body language moments look for camera angles and things to communicate something much more deep to do this type of photography is not something you do in a quick five minute drive-by shooting like he spent time with Bailey King you're going to spend some time so I hope this challenges you if you want your pictures to be better study some, pick up some psychology book read about body language and most of all, spend a lot of time with your subjects getting to know them so that you can become the fly on the wall as Don was to capture people and communicate their stories so that the rest of us can benefit from them. Thank you.